this video today, we're going to be removing the tuner from a mainboard uh, using the 808 desolder gun. So the typical reason for having to remove the tuner is bad reception or you know, channels missing uh, or not picking any channels up at all. Obviously make sure you check your source. If you can hook it up to another TV, that's great. And then you can kind of confirm the problems with the board. This is only going to affect the TV reception. It wouldn't affect anything else. The HDMI, component, composite are all still going to work and you'll still get on-screen display. So if you're missing any of those, it's another problem with the board. Remember to follow usual precautions and make sure that the board and yourself are grounded before you begin work. So just like before, I'm going to take our desolder gun and put it right on top. And in this case, it's melding really well, so we won't add any flux. Once it's heated up, go ahead and vacuum it out. And again, wait until it melts. Give it a second, especially on these larger connections that hold the casing. And there we go. Next, we're gonna to start to remove the tuna pins. Same applies, it's gonna take a little less heat and a little less time. And wiggling it as well will sometimes just help if you're having problems removing them from the joint. And the back one. So after you've desoldered the, the tuna, you might find that it's still stuck in place. If this happens, you can kind of give it a little wiggle. And you can usually spot which pins are stuck. On this one, it's the first pin. So I can go ahead and just take the desolder gun again and warm that first pin up. Give it another quick suck. There we go. Now it's dropped out and we could put in our replacement tuner. So we have our new tuner and we can go ahead and slot it in place. It should just drop right in and then hold it and flip it over. And one of the things I do when I go to work on it, just to keep it in, is slide a screwdriver underneath and that helps to and you can get it in place. Yeah. And that keeps it up in place and stops it from falling out. Oftentimes the tuner is going to be lower than the other components on the board. So when you turn it over, it'll just fall right out. Okay, so as normal, I'm using a rosin core solder, but I'm going to add some flux to the board anyway. It just kind of helps it the solder get into the joint a little bit deeper. I think it helps it spread better. So I'm going to paint some on each joint we're going to do. I'm going to make sure it gets right in there. And then next, make sure we got a nice clean soldering iron tip. Now we can go ahead and start to solder the joints. So once again, try and add solder to the opposite side. Oh, on this one, sometimes it can be a little tough. And my solder's not melting that well, so I'm gonna go ahead for the next joint and just bump the temperature up on the iron a little bit. So I've gone ahead and bumped up the temperature on the iron a little. Sometimes with these pads with lighter green, obviously there's a lot more copper there and it acts like a heat sink. 
so you sometimes need to turn the temperature up a little to make it work. Let's see if this will go. And that helped. And on to the next joint. So you can go ahead and let it heat up the joint. And melt it right in. And the same on this one. And now we can work on the tuner connections. And at this point I can take it off the screwdriver and lay it down flat. It makes it a little bit easier to work. And the same applies. We're going to take the soldering iron and touch it to the pad and the pin. And melt our solder in. There we go. And the next one. And keep on working down the line. And you should see that the flux as it evaporates will kind of draw the solder down into the joint. So now we've soldered in the tuner, you, we turned it over just to check our connections and as you can see we've got nice even contacts and you can see the solder on the opposite side. That's a good sign because it drew the solder all the way through the joint. So you shouldn't have any problems in the future. Now we can go ahead and just clean up the back of the board and we'll be good to go. So now we can get ready to clean. It's always good practice to do this on any board just to remove the flux. Most fluxes that you're going to use in electronics don't have any acid in them so they're not going to damage the board but when you're dealing with tuners it can conduct and actually affect the signal sometimes and it just looks better so it's better to remove it so we can take our alcohol and our brush and make sure we get right in here and clean between all those joints make sure we get rid of all of that flux And there we go, we can let that air dry and we should be set. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings.